Let's create this HyperZoom effect in Affinity Photo. First step is to duplicate the original image by pressing Command or Ctrl J so that we don't lose our original image as we will be working destructively for this effect. Make sure the duplicated layer is active and select the In Painting Brush tool from the Tools panel and paint over the face area with a nice margin to also include some areas outside the actual face. Let In Painting do its job and you probably will get something like this, where the face has been replaced with hair in my case. To apply the zoom effect we are going to use the Filter menu. From the Blur section, select Zoom Blur. This will open up the Zoom Blur dialog and while the dialog is visible, select the center point of the effect on the document canvas. By the way, the zoom radius of 200 was pre-filled in my dialog. But you can adjust it to your needs. Keep in mind that the slider only goes to 100 pixels and if you want to go beyond 100 pixels you can just manually type in the value you want. Excellent. Let's now select the original layer, make a duplicate of it and move it to the top of the layer stack, which basically brings back the original image. From this image I want to keep the face only, so we are going to add a mask. I'm going to add an empty mask or an inverted mask by clicking on the mask icon while holding the Alt or Option key which pops up a selection menu from which I can select empty mask. Adding an empty mask will hide our layer but by painting in with a white brush we can get back the areas we want. Let me make sure my brush flow size is 100% and I have a low hardness value. With the brush preview feature in Affinity, it is easy to locate the face and I can now paint back the face. To make the transition a bit smoother, I will lower my brush flow to around 10% and slightly paint over the areas I want to have a smoother transition. And we're done. Pretty awesome. You might wonder why I use the in-painting brush on the layer we applied the zoom blur to. The best way to explain that is by showing what would happen if we didn't do that. I'll quickly hide the zoom player and make a duplicate of the original. On this duplicate I'm directly going to apply the zoom blur. When I now enable the masked face, notice how bad the transition is and how we got the strange halo around the face. By making sure that the layer to be zoomed has the same color and structure as the border area of the layer which will be on top of it, we get a much better result. So this is with the in-painting and this is without. We can all agree that the in-painted version looks much better. Thanks again for tuning in and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Until the next video.